the thought that I think I've had for about the last 10 or 15 years is that one of the weaknesses of the, open, of the notion of the open society is that Popper himself agrees that we're not naturally inclined to live in open societies. That, so to speak, the natural human condition is to look for comfort, to fall back on tradition, to find our tribe, and that in some ways the success of the societies of Western Europe after 1945 in building open societies owed a great deal to prosperity yes. and anxious liberals like myself always wonder whether if times turn bad are we then going to get just a retrudescence of all sorts of tribalisms ethnic antipathies, nationalisms of the sort we saw before the Second World War. No, no, I, I think you're absolutely right, because the, 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 the key idea of an open society is the recognition that you may be wrong. I actually carry it further because I, uh, uh, I, I take a sort of a more radical view of fallibility, but he he was saying that that's the key, and, and uh, that's not a um, to be to to have to be self-critical and to be examining what you've got whether you've got it wrong or so. It's not an easy thing to do, and it has to be rewarding, and it's really the ability of an open society to innovate, to discover, uh, to, to uh, uh, have a better understanding of reality and, and, and gain the advantage of that is what justifies uh, taking that uh, trouble. And when things really go wrong, uh, then open society is endangered. And that's how it became endangered in the interwar period by the Great Depression. Um, and, uh, and that's why it's very endangered today. Um, so uh, it's, it's, it, it's something to be very, very concerned uh, about. I felt that the really interesting questions are exactly those that logical positivism considered meaningless, because that's really what matters. Uh, the, the, the questions that, that don't correspond to, fact, to the facts uh, or the statements. Um, um, that's where you need to have some beliefs. Uh, and we need to have some beliefs to make decisions. Right. Um, um, and since you can't have knowledge. You can't base your uh, your your um, uh, uh, decisions on knowledge. It's actually that's why you need the, a philosophy to have beliefs which guide you in making decisions. So that's where I think we need a, a philosophy, and we need to reinvent uh, philosophy for that purpose. So as to keep asking the large framing questions. Mm -hmm. and, and how to come, you see, uh, uh, I, I argue that uh, 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 the Enlightenment um, which discovered the reason, so to speak, the, the power of reason to, uh, to, to to enlighten you, to, to guide you, uh, but it assumed that uh, reality and thinking are separate, that uh, the reality is out there and reason is like a searchlight that illuminates uh, 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 reality. And it did produce fantastic results. But at, at the time when there was still an awful lot 
of, of reality to be discovered. I mean, even even the 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 the, the, the Earth hadn't been properly mapped out. You know, Africa was still unknown, uh, and so on. Uh, so uh, that was the age of reason. Uh, but now we have had 200 years of it, and we discovered that. Uh, that um, reality in the social affairs is not independent of our thinking. It's not out there that gives you that independent criterion, but that it's, inter it's reflexively two-way two interaction, feedback between reality and our understanding of reality. So this is, uh, leads to imperfect understanding. So we now, uh, I think we are in the age of fallibility and how to understand a reality which is uh, uh, not independent but integrally connected with our thinking and can in fact be changed by our decisions. My, my worry about this is twofold. One worry, <coughs> one worry is political, which is how much headway can one really hope to make against manipulation and the other is really what deep and alarming truths about our own cognitive capacities <coughs> might we yet come up with well I, I think your question takes us back to <coughs> open, actually open society uh, and what's wrong with open society and uh, namely uh, Popper took it for granted that there's only the cognitive function and ignored the, the, uh, the manipulative or causative function uh, and yet the, the causative function does exist uh, and it has been discovered actually um, and uh, uh, it has actually been refined it has it has really become a, 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 a science how to manipulate which has undermined uh, this uh, belief in uh, open society and, and dem democracy uh, and open society being practically synonymous uh, and has endangered actually the functioning of an open society, of, of democracy, which was based on the idea that uh, representative democracy, that representatives will present themselves and, and people then choose uh, based on the, the beliefs that they profess uh, who would represent them the best. And the representatives have learned um, and have whole teams working for them to tell them what they need to tell the people in order to get elected. And that has actually really uh, uh, disrupted this process. In other words, it, it, it's important for us to understand how a reality that can be manipulated really functions. 